defaulted in paying resettled debts. Chairman, uh, 28 oil marketing companies failed to settle their rescheduled debts, and the amount involved is 402 million 49,571. Point seven zero. Uh, the details are presented in the table under uh, paragraph 101. In 2020, 14 OMCs owed 113,393,572.8, and out of that, 18,266,000. Thousand three hundred ninety-three point seven one was paid, leaving a balance of ninety-five million one hundred seventy one hundred twenty-seven thousand one seventy-nine point zero nine. Then in 2021, uh, same number of companies, 14 OMCs, the amount owned was three one seven point seven million, and out of that, ten point five million was paid. And our, the outstanding balance was 306.9 million. The total is 402.049571.7. Uh, what is the status of the uh, outstanding debt? Thank you, Honorable um, Chair. I will defer it to the Commissioner for customs and then I'll add to rate in summary when he has given the summary. Um, Honorary Chair, before I proceed, I would like to say that as at the measures have been taken, because as at 2021, we had about 45 defaulting OMCs, which amounted to 965.4 million, out of which Eight, out of which 135.2 million was paid, leaving a balance of 818.1 million. The following measures were taken by the top management of GRA to make sure that these things don't come on again. All liftings are now supposed to be backed by bank guarantees or insurance bonds. And then presently we have even uh, reduced I mean, only eight uh, insurance companies are allowed to guarantee for OMCs to, to lift just because of the strength of their balance sheets. This is to ensure that when there is a default, the authority can be able to trace, I mean, to get the money from the, the bonds. Each insurance company is also is restricted to a total amount of, to cover, of cover so that it will give the OMCs a limit. And uh, also our new system has also automatically put in a, a, a measure to block OMCs who are, who are defaulting so that they will not be able to take, to lift more oil when they are in default. And however, OMCs who, who cannot get the guarantee and can pay in cash are allowed to pay upfront and take uh, the, 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 the duties upfront and take the, the, the oil. So because of these measures, by, by the end of 20, tw I mean by 2022, we had only four companies that defaulted, and the amount was 45.9 million, out of which 27.5 million has been recovered, leaving 18.3, which we are still following up. Out of this year, the, sec the first half of this year, we have only two companies which have defaulted, amounting to 1.16 million. Mr. Chairman, I want to then continue to deal with what has happened on the old ones. Um, can I go on, sir? Please go on, go on. Yeah. But if you can make it in a summary form. Okay, sir. Um, out of the 2020, we had a tax, a total liability of 95.1 million, and the amount recovered was only 
Is it the same question? It's the same question, but I'm breaking them down. I'm so them just, down. just, just make it okay. this way that the total okay. amount that the OMC is defaulted yeah. was one hundred and four hundred and two. Four hundred and two. Have you recovered all these or part of it? How much is left to be recovered? Okay. Then we'll move on to another person. Another question. Chairman, yeah, um, I'll come in wise yeah. here. Mm. Yeah, basically the OMCs, in terms of their recovery, has not been very significant. But we have taken the, these OMCs through all the processes and the powers that are available to the January for any recovery as far as debts in uh, tax liability is concerned. We have garnished their accounts, we have sealed off their premises, and as of this, we still didn't get um, what we were expected to get from them. And therefore, what we have done now is to take them to court and prosecute them. And that is the ultimate um, position. So we are doing criminal prosecution against all the OMS. In fact, most of the OMS that we have listed here are going and undergoing criminal prosecution, including the directors of the companies. As I speak, some of them have made um, proposals in terms of uh, settlement proposals, which has been tabled at the courts for them to pay. And when the time comes and they fail, then they will have to be um, sent to um, prison uh, sentence. Uh, and so this, as, as he mentioned earlier on, for going forward, we are putting the mechanism to ensure that this does not occur again. And the measures, as he had uh, outlined, included the fact that now we require all banks to bring, uh, the OMC to bring banks to guarantee their liftings, or if we want to use um, uh, insurance companies, we have now done analysis and appraised insurance companies and given them limits. So today, out of the over 20 something insurance companies, only eight insurance companies qualify to give guarantees. Out of the eight, we have also done individual appraisal and given them limits so that you have counterparty limit for each insurance company that you cannot guarantee more than, say, two million or three million, and it's working. And the fact that it's working shows that, I mean, the evidence that it's working. Is that today? Yeah, I think the measures are good, but okay. we, for record purposes, we want to know how much has been recovered so far, so that we can so, record it. So for the 306, for the four, for the 95, yeah, okay, the 2020, the 95, yes, yeah. six million has been rec recovered, and then for the three, uh, Clark, the take note of that, six million recovered out of 96, 95 million, yes, and then the 306, the 306. how much? 12.8 million has been recovered. 12.8 okay. million. So that will give you a total of 18.8 million out of the 402. Yes, so, I chair. And, and the rest, you are, process, you, are, you, are, you are in court now to recover the money yes. from them. Yes, for most of them, we are in the court prosecuting them. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, I thought I heard the Commissioner saying that uh, they now have 45 million outstanding. And what the, what the, uh, the Commissioner is saying, if you take them from this 400 and something million, what will be left will be substantial. So I don't, I don't quite get what. Uh, the state commissioner was saying, if it was left with only 45, uh, how can you say that you have recovered only about 18? Mr. Chairman, I'll clarify what he was uh, trying to allude to. Now, he was looking at, at the end of each of the three years, that is 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023, as to the new uh, deaths that were uh, accrued. And then he was saying that in the uh, audit that they did, they have shown that in 2020, 2020 alone, we had about over 100 and something million, where the balance was 95 million, which I've just given that we collected six out of it. Then in 2021, the balance that was, came out in 2021 alone was the 306 million. Now, when you come to 2022, by the end of the year, because of the measures, instead of 300, it's not the balance from, in other words, what, what happened in that year was 45 as against the previous year when for 2021 we had 300 and then 2022 we had 95. So he was trying to show that the measures are working. So if you take 2023, as of today, 
we have only two, and the total amount is 1.1 million. So that's what you're so, trying so to So it's say. clear now that yes. the measure you put in place, it's working such so that the amount which is being accumulated at the end of the year yes. keep reducing from 306 in 2021 it came to 45 in 2022. Yes. And then came to 1.2 in 2020, as at now. Yes, on So it means that the measures are working. Yes, on our But we have to focus on how to recover the, the old one, exactly, old ones, on Which you are working on, and we are in court yes, to recover some of them. Yes. All right, let's move to the next. Okay, your last one. Uh, I just want to find out the companies uh, who defaulted which defaulted in 2020 and uh, 2021. Are they still lifting oil? Chair, um, most of them have actually been, even um, the alliances have been taken by the um, NPA, and therefore currently they are not um, lifting. So we don't have, now for normally when we do the rescheduling, like if there's a new debt and we reschedule and you have to lift, we have to make sure that you will use part of your liftings to pay for the old one, and then you use the rest to pay for the current one. So for example, the two that I talked about currently, and then the uh, four from the previous year, that's what we are doing. But for the old ones, most of them are no longer lifting, and the alliances have been taken by the MPA. All right, paragraph 103, some George. Thank you, Chairman. May you live long. Um, Commissioner General, you are empowered by Section 104 of the Customs Act 2015, Act 891, to cause a person who owes duty or tax arrears to pay within 30 days after they have made a written request to your office. OMCs also have 21 days plus a grace period of four working days following the lifting period to settle their liabilities. How then is it that, as at the time this audit was done, eight OMCs in 2020 had lifted products amounting to 164 million, 761,994 Ghana cities, 77 pesos, and then nine OMCs in 2021 Lifted product amounting to 85,38,807 Ghana cities, 51 pesos, totaling 249,800,802 Ghana cities, 28 pesos, beyond the stipulated time, and you had not recovered the amounts in full. Did you sleep on the job? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member. Honorable, no, we did not sleep at the job. Um, as we, I clarified earlier on, the system, the way it was working, just as you have said, that when you lift, when you lift and you go and sell, the one you sell, you come and pay. And that you have, you have the 24 days to pay. Now, some of them previously were lifting, had had the right to lift without a bond. Today, we have eliminated that because to rely on somebody to give him or a company, say 10 million, without any security, and expect that out of his own evolution, when the time comes, you will come and honor the obligation. It's a challenge. And therefore, we have canceled, and any new entity who we applied must apply with a bank guarantee, so that if he defaults, he can go to the bank and collect the money. So the previously, when this was being done, that's when they got the opportunity, and they lived. When the time comes, they don't pay. And then your question as to whether we slept on the job, when they didn't pay, as I mentioned, we garnished the account, but we, we, we didn't get the money. We um, uh, seal off their premises, and then we move on to prosecute them. And because the money is already with them, you have to go through these processes and to the ultimate where he has to be sentenced to um, a prison sentence if he fails to honor the obligation. So, so Commissioner General, 249 million, 800,802 Ghana cities. How much have you recovered? We have collected 1.4 out of that one. 1.4? Uh, 
No, no, Commissioner General, I, I'm not sure I heard you. you. You said you weren't sleeping on the job, but you've collected 1.4 million out of 249 million. Is that correct? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think, as I explained to you, the system that was in place at the moment was not an adequate system, and therefore we had to change the system. And today, because one, as I said, if, if is, is, have, uh, uh, can the auditors confirm even the 1.4 million recovery? Be, be, because. Honorable Chair, an amount of 1,445,012 Ghana cities point eight nine has been recovered out of 249,800,202, leaving a balance of 248,355,789.11. Thank you. Commissioner General, I just did the mathematics. Your recovery is 0 0.05, 005. 0 0.005 of the amount that is, percent of the amount that is needed. Um, so, so this 0 0.5 percent of 0 0.5 percent, half a percentage point of the amount that is owed, the outstanding amount are you prosecuting? And because we weren't given the list, are these 17 different OMCs? Or is it the same OMCs that lifted in 28, uh, 2020 that relifted again in 2021? We would like to know. But recovery and then what is left, what are we doing about it, please? Honorable uh, Chair, thank you once again. As I mentioned, the processes for recovery is number one to garnish and if there's anything in the account you take number two if there's nothing you go and seal off and see if there's anything in the premises you to take it number three if all these things fails and you still get, get the money you prosecute and on which we have not left, left any uh, stone on ten in making sure that the ultimate is done and so most of these uh, um, OMCs who have defaulted are in court as I speak and we are prosecuting. A number of them um, have done some, uh, what That's they call settlement, settlement agreement. And this settlement agreement has been deposited at the court for them to start paying. And that's how come we have some of these payments coming through. Those who will fail. C Commissioner, for the purposes of time, we just want to know the outstanding amount. Are you prosecuting the people? Yes, Have you identified minister. them? Yes, yes or no? Chair, we are prosecuting them. The, and then I asked, the 8 and 9 in 2020 and 2021, are they different entities? Or it is the same entity? Some, some are the same that lifted in 2020 and 2021? They, they are different, Honorable Chair. So 17 indiv independent companies, OMCs? Yes. And all of them are now in court? Yes. Honorable Chair, we have about 30 OMCs. Can, ha, did you provide evidence of the court processes to the Auditor General? Auditor General, do you have evidence that there is actual prosecution going on of this? Honorable Chair, all the document, we have a copy to that effect. Thank you. Chairman, I rest. Paragraph 106, Honorable Akosi Konedu. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this has to do with some losses of tax revenue at the thermal collection point of our banded warehouses. And Section 123 of Act 891 mandate and empower you to either impound and also charge penalties on duties that are not paid. However, there are three companies, uh, Syria Investment, Midlands International, Alpha Industries, with a if a declaration of about 3.2 million Ghana cities worth of goods, but however, uh, they had an ex warehouse CIF value of about 3.2, that is a reduction in the value, resulting in a tax liability unpaid of about 55 million Ghana cities. And it was recommended that the senior con 
commander should ensure that that amount is recovered and penalties are properly charged to these companies also has that been done honorable chair uh, this particular amount i mean the uh, this particular case has been settled what happened was that the differences in the the cif when they were going to the warehouse and the one that when they were i mean coming out was because when you are clearing goods into a warehouse we use the actual value of the goods by the time they were i mean bringing it out from the warehouse the, the discount was operational where we, we were supposed to discount the goods by a certain amount and that accounts for the differences in the CIF from the very i mean the, the time of warehousing and the time of ex warehousing so when they did the declaration with the discounted amount they had a, i mean uh, uh, they, they fully paid the duty element of uh, uh, 20,000 20, Ghana cities. So it has been settled and all the, there's no outstanding, there's no revenue loss and there's no outstanding. Has evidence of that been shown to the auditors? I think that, yeah, we have done that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Auditors, can you confirm on that? Honorable Chair, we can confirm that the 20,000 has been paid, the rest has been waived, thank you. The rest have been waived. The, the in and out calculation that was done, as you explained. Uh, thank you. But per the in and out calculation, uh, how did you apply the discount? Was it applied for, or is it mandatory that once you warehouse and they are being taken out, you apply a discount on that? No, the issue is that warehousing is a facility, and when you are going there, when the goods are sent there, the goods can be brought out and sent outside the country. But at that time, we had a discount for. I mean, for all those who are importing for home consumption. So if you are taking the goods from the warehouse for home consumption, you will be entitled to the uh, discount. But if you are taking it to send to another country, then we will, we will give that value for that country to also use their laws. So that was the reason why when they were bringing it out for home consumption, they applied for the discount. But as of now, that discount is no more existent. So if somebody's warehouse and is bringing it out, he's not entitled to it. Thank you. And Chairman, that will be all. Yes, Let's go to paragraph 109, Honorable Sophia. Thank you, Chairman. 109, outstanding tax liability. And the total amount is 5.2006.37. Please, have you collected the... 5.2 million. 5.2 million. Please, how to find out if you have collected it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, uh, on which, uh, yes, um, there was a couple of um, taxpayers who were involved in this one. And the one for, uh, I don't want to mention the, things, but they have been collected. All of them. All of them have been collected, please. Nick Hotel and yes they have paid okay auditors please can you confirm if all the three have paid the 5.2 thank you honorable chair a total of five million twenty four thousand and sixty nine point one five has been correct recovered leaving the balance of one eighty five thousand eight hundred twenty seven point four nine Thank you. Yes, on, on which I, I want to confirm that. Um, yes, there's for Fabri International, there's an outstanding of 180,000. Yeah, but it's, it's, there's a scheduled payment. And the last payment was done. Um, uh, yes, a satisfactory arrangement for the remainder. Okay. Chairman, that's all for them. All right, let's go to paragraph 111 unaccounted revenue. 1.4 million Ghana cities. Now, according to the auditors, um, records at Batume Junction Station shows that the total revenue amounting to 1.4 was collected between January and June 2021 by Emmanuel Entry IJ, uh, but he had not accounted for it. The recommendation by the auditors is that the center commander should immediately recover 
the amount from Emmanuel NGIJ. And he should also be sanctioned. The failure of which the center commander and the regional accountant should be held liable. Has the money been recovered from Emmanuel Enchi Ajay? Honorable Chair, the money has not been recovered, but uh, the officer involved has, uh, after going through our disciplinary procedures, have been uh, dismissed, and uh, we, are, we, are, we are preparing him for, for prosecution. When was he dismissed? Oh, he, I think early this year, after the, I mean, after the process of... Uh, you think? No. This one, is, there is no thinking here. Mm -hmm. It's specific. When was he dismissed? Yeah, I think his final dismissal came from... You are thinking again. I said, uh, uh, when... Mr. Jama, let me, if I can come on up with we, we had to go through the process the, in terms of the disciplinary procedure. When they initially, when it happened, when his attention was drawn to read, he was uh, pulled from the station and stationed with his uh, sector commander in the uh, uh, and then the disciplinary procedure started. So when the disciplinary procedure com was completed, uh, I think about a month or so ago, and then we now had to uh, issue the termination of his appointment. We you have a copy of the termination letter. Yes, I'm sure it's, it was done about a couple All right, can you furnish the committee with a copy? And then in addition, mm -hmm. we try to look for one other thing we're doing to try to see whether we can get any monies from him before the termination was done. Okay. And we could not succeed. The only thing we got was an amount as far as his provident fund, which was um, some benefit that he was supposed to get, and then also some um, credit union savings that he has done. So these are the two that we have held on. Mm. And now we have gone ahead, because we are not getting the money from him, we decided to go ahead and terminate, and then also to take the matter to court, because the money has been appropriated by the... Um, so, Mr. Uh, Commissioner General, apart from the attempt to recover the money, which so far we have, we have not been successful, and then the ultimate is to terminate the appointment and prosecute him, have you found out what led into he appropriating this money without the knowledge of the office. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think the, again, the previous procedure of the, of the Revenue Authority collecting cash and then there was no um, bank at the particular point. They have to now collect, keep the cash for one week and then send it to another uh, location was not an effective and efficient and security proven system. And that's why GRA has moved to cashless. And therefore, today what happens is that we don't allow any officer to handle cash at all in any of our offices. And we use the technology and the system to ensure that cash goes straight to the bank. Okay, um, so okay. That's, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Honorable Roxin. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Um, uh, Doc, I know that now you have prosecutorial powers. So, is it your, your in-house lawyers who are prosecuting this matter? Yes, Or is please. that Attorney General? Is, is your in-house? It's our in-house lawyers who are doing... Then we the shouldn't have delays, Commissioner General. We should... It, the, the prosecution should be expeditious. Because it's under your direct control. So we want to urge you to do it expeditiously. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, we will... We, we got a lot of help from the... Um, previous judicial chief justice yes okay. chief justice to the extent that he even established for us a special court for the prosecution i and i know all that all i'm saying is that because the prosecution is done by your in-house lawyers we want that to be done expeditiously you don't rely on the attorney general the police to do it for you Thank you very you much. Have that on, power on, now, on so. which, uh, we will okay. uh, ensure that. Paragraph 115, Honorable Apak. Most grateful, Mr. Chairman. The issue at hand is about outstanding income tax taxes. And the auditors quote an amount of 111 million Ghana cities, 652,263. 
According to the auditors, they reviewed some 13,721 selected tax files from 21 domestic tax revenue offices in Greater Accra. And Mr. Chairman, they go on to provide a very exhaustive list of the 21 um, tax offices. What they are indicating is that out of the number that they, they sampled, various offices had failed to provide information about taxes paid. And they are asking the commissioner, the chief tax collector of the Republic of Ghana, to increase enforcement towards collecting the outstanding tax revenue. What action have you taken with regards to this infraction? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, generally, we have increased enforcement and the various measures as far as the debt collection is concerned. And I can say that for most of the uh, domestic debts that we are going to go through, our collection rates have been between 80 to 90 percent. And as we go to them one by one, you will see significant collections at the various uh, collection agencies. I will hand over to the Commissioner for Domestic Tax, who will take us through the specific ones, especially beginning from the one you just cited. So you talk about from my thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, as uh, rightly said by the Commissioner General, the business we do and tax debt is one of the things that uh, we manage. The most important thing is uh, how we manage the tax debt. And uh, from the, our last meeting here uh, with you, if you increase the tempo of our enforcement so you could see from what we are presenting today that the rate of recovery has improved and this is as a result of most of the things that commissioner general earlier on talked about it uh, where we're doing a lot of enforcement measures garnishment seal off and together we also do prosecution if you fail to do. All this is accounting for the high rate of recovery that we are seeing. But when it comes to the domestic tax, uh, cash flow at times is also a big challenge for some of the taxpayers, particularly when it has to do with the income tax bit. So getting a very low or uh, a grand zero, zero uh, debt is uh, really impossible but the recovery and the enforcement within the domestic front has been very encouraged i i i, so, I like i like the story but just just yeah. hold it we, so we, you now i'm giving this background so that the rest i'll just give you the okay the recovery. very, very yeah, well thank you all right so uh, uh, with paragraph 115 and 117 the total liability of 11 111.6. We've done a recovery of 87.3. Objection determined 424. Penalty and interest with courtesy uh, Parliament law that you passed 70, 740. Then return file and that we examine uh, 5.8, leaving outstanding balance of. 17.6. So the total recovery is, as at now, is 84%. Mr. Chair. So 84% of the said amount is what? In specific figures? It, it, it's what has been recovered. So what is left? What has been resolved? No, no, no. I, I, you, we are talking about... I want the nominal figure. Yeah, the nominal figure is... Uh, 87 is what has been recovered. Okay, so 87.3 million yeah, point is three what has been recovered. recovered. Okay. Now, uh, we have objection determined 424 thousand. thousand. Then penalty and interest waived 740. Then return filed and examined 5.4. Very well. Yeah. I, uh, I, I I certainly think that you are putting in a good effort. Thank you. That sir. is uh, my 
my understanding looking at the figures but i also noticed that the auditors did not go through all the files not all of them yeah but they have a, a column files with outstanding yeah. and those files are in excess of six thousand the amount that you are recovering is based on the 13,721 files, mm -hmm. which means that there's a lot of more work to be done. So I can only urge you on, and uh, I'll yield to Mr. Chairman if he has any ad ad additions. Thank you. All right, so the balance of 17 plus million, is that amount recoverable? Mr. Chair, yes. Okay. All right, so clerk, take note. Uh, let's move to paragraph 118. Honorable Dakwa. Thank you, Chairman. So, contrary to section 114 of the Income Tax Act, uh, the Auditor General noted that employers of 2,775 employees and 346 directors did not remit pay as you earn payee to the Commissioner General for 2019, 2020, and 2021. And they gave a list of um, 20 tax offices. And the outstanding taxes came up to 32,071,515 um, Ghana cities. Um, the Auditor General went on. Um, to recommend that you recover all outstanding pay together with appropriate penalties okay so first of all can you tell us how much has been recovered what is left to be covered and what penalties have been applied so far thank you Mr. Chair, thank you very much uh, uh, out of the 32 million 25 million representing 78.4% has been recovered. Now, objection determined 43,801. Now, the returns that we examine, the files that we examine also, uh, we have 203, and penalty and interest waived, amounting to 1.7, leaving our standing balance of 4.3 which uh, we, um, 4.9, which we are employing our enforcement measures to correct them. Uh, on our chair, as I said, it's employee taxes and uh, we expect it to be paid. However, uh, we have instances where some of these companies have cash flow challenges. And when it happens like that, some of them default in paying the employee taxes. So we, uh, we pursue collection to ensure that they pay. Thank you. All right. Um, auditors, can you confirm that they've paid about 78.4% of the total amount? Honorable Chair, the assertions made by the Commissioner have been confirmed. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I think we are satisfied with his response. Um, you've collected uh, a huge amount, and it's just left with um, a little which you have to collect and so recover. And so I think I don't have any issue. I don't know, Chairman. All right. So we we'll only encourage you to pursue the balance. Um, we we'll move to paragraph one. To one. Honorable Johnson, they do. Thank you, Chairman. This paragraph has to do with outstanding withholding tax amount of 43 million four hundred seventy one thousand five hundred and two Ghana cities. Auditors examination of tax files show that eight hundred and eleven companies which presented audited accounts of 2019, 2020, and 2021. Years of assessment failed to withhold tax on goods and services amounting to 43 million in excess. And we were asked to recover this amount. Can we know the status of the recovery of this amount? Honorable Chair, uh, out of 
34. We've recovered 34.9. Penalty and interest waived 1.9, leaving outstanding balance of 6.5, which we are employing our enforcement measures to uh, recover. Thank you. So, can you give the committee any timelines to finish the recovery of the remaining amount? On our side, that would be difficult, but we, we, we will go through our uh, enforcement process where we are unable to collect within the time, the administrative time. We will escalate it to the court. And when it gets to the court, it will depend on the court. Thank you. Chairman, this is the position of the commissioner. All right, I think that that's okay. Paragraph 124, Honorable Bauer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the same paragraph uh, is um, also is about uh, outstanding VAT not collected. And uh, according to the auditors, during their review, about 651 registered VAT traders who filed their returns at the uh, various tax offices um, owed a total of about 87 million 166,616.95 for three consecutive years 2019, 2020, and 2021 years of assessment. Um, there's a table that has been provided. I don't want to bore you. We're about, we're about 21 tax offices. And then also about 651, as I said. So the uh, recommendation by the commissioner is that you should take the necessary steps to act within the acts to recover all these outstanding taxes. Can you bring us up to speed as to actions that you've taken on the or the next step that you have taken to recover these outstanding monies. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Out of the 87.1, we've recovered 70.7. Objection determined on this assessment 1.1. Returns file and examined 360,000. Penalty and interest waived 2.5. Remaining uh, outstanding balance, 12.3. And again, we are employing our, uh, our enforcement measures to collect the outstanding balance. Thank you. Um, Auditor General, can you confirm that uh, out of the 87, the balance left is about 12.3? Can you confirm that? Honorable Chair, confirm. And then uh, my problem is, why is it that you allow the traders to be keeping the money consecutively for three years? What steps have you, have you put in place to ensure that this particular, uh, I mean, uh, does not occur, okay, this particular infraction does not occur okay again? Like, I, I believe at the end of the year, when they go, come to file their returns, they have to pay whatever taxes that they've collected. The traders have collected on behalf of GRA. So what steps are you taking to ensure that it doesn't, this uh, anomaly does not occur again? Mr. Chair, uh, as I said from the beginning, uh, tax debt is one of the things that we examine as uh, revenue administrators. Uh, we expect that once the tax is due, the taxpayer was, will make payment, but uh, in some instances, due to other factors such as cash flow, as I mentioned, some traders are unable to fulfill their obligation on time. And uh, when it happens, what is left to us is to employ our enforcement measures to recover them. So that is the position. Thank you. It is not us allowing them not to pay they default. And when they default, we also use the law to enforce payment. Thank you. Yeah, um, 
Commissioner, I think what my member is trying to say is that these are monies collected on your behalf. They are not uh, monies that are supposed to be coming from the cash flow of the organizations. So for them to be outstanding for maybe two years, in the case, I think that the VAT law expect them to pay the money within a month or so, 15 days after collection. So if it is outstanding for three years, then it's not good performance. That's what he's trying to say. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. I think the point we are making is that we expect that all taxpayers will honor their obligation within the time frame, the 30 days that you mentioned. But unfortunately, some are unable to do that. And when it happens, the same tax law allows us to employ other measures to collect. And that is what we've been using over the years. So you may have a tax debt uh, sitting in the booth, as you just mentioned, but not that the authority is not making any effort in recovering that. I know, if I can, if I, my, my, okay. If I, commission, if I may yeah. add, again, we continue to look at opportunities to increase the efficiency so that we can reduce these things. And so that is why we are working on the new system where the uh, VAT will be done electronically where you are connected to our system. And therefore, the time that it will take you for you to come and file, because sometimes there people will delay in filing and for you to know actually how much they have collected. And this all ends up in delaying the process of collecting. But the new system that we are introducing, automatically by the time you finish the year, we, the, the month, we already know how much you are supposed to give to us. And therefore, this efficiency will increase. And we are hoping that before the end of the year, um, a number of the taxpayers will be on this new um, system. And this is a way of re um, addressing the concerns that you have raised. Uh, Commissioner, I want a little clarification. If you read paragraph 125, it stated that during our review of three debtors file, the, le the ledger balances, we noted that 650 registered VAT traders who filed, who filed their returns. So my understanding is that when taxpayers come and file their returns, it means they are paying. So I don't understand why they have filed their returns, but they are owing for three years and things like that. Does it mean that they just come and file and then don't pay? I, I don't understand it. I just want a dedication. How do they do that? Okay. Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, filing and payment are two different functions. Taxpayers are required to file their returns on, due de on a particular day. So, for instance, for the VAT, you are supposed to file a month after the month that uh, the transaction occurred. In the same way, you are also supposed to pay. So you can file and pay. You are two transactions. You have instances where a taxpayer may file, but because if you fail to file, it has different function. If you fail to pay, you have a different function. So a taxpayer may not have the funds to pay, but instead of incurring the two sanctions, you may decide to file and hold on with the payment. So there are two functions. So you, uh, for, uh, to answer your question, you may file and default in payment. Thank you. Uh, I think that um, next time I will expect that when you, you, you I'm, uh, well, I'm also saying this to the auditors, we want to have an idea of the indebtedness breaking down, breaking down into years. So we should be able to tell that this 87 million, 10 million of that is for 2019. So that we, I mean, for us, I think that is more important than the number of task offices that you provide. For us, that is what will be more important. So next time, if you can give us that information, that will be helpful. I'm asking them. I'm not asking you. Yeah, I agree, agree. Uh, I think uh, on the filing and the payment, I'll give you a contract. 
I've ordered your contract. Eh? Payment may delay more than three years. But you have executed, executed a contract. You have invoiced the, uh, the, your client's transaction. So what happens? The law says they come and file. If you don't file, there's a penalty associated to that. Meanwhile, the payment is not due. Until come and pay you, you cannot come and pay your tax. So that is why those are standing sometimes normally are uh, there. And you know it's a living subject. It's a progressive type of this. So I think that is what uh, the clarity my boss wanted to. Honorable, are you a witness answering for No, I'm just saying something. No, it is something that I think I saw that his point was. Uh, but, let, but them, put let them was, answer. No, but chairman, uh, the, uh, the, because with what I have said, it probably, and you, I'm not one of you. It has added more weight to what my my, my people are saying. Which are, your people? Which are your people? The the, the they are collecting money for you. I don't know your people. I don't know your people. Samson, Samson, hold on. No, Mr. Chairman, I don't. Samson, hold on. Mr. Chairman, let's leave it. No, I have a question, question for you. Okay. Now that you want to become a witness, I have a question for you. Yeah, he has not. He has already been covered by the swearing. What does the law say? about VAT. He said, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct, he's supposed to pay it in 30 days. No, Chairman, if you are supposed to file, within, within by 30th of the following month, you should file your return. And then, and then you pay in three years' whether time. Whether you receive payment or not. And pay in three years' time. But you see... What does the law say? No, the law says pay your tax. But contractors are... No, the law says pay your VAT within 30 days. No. No, you have to what file a return. Lot? So the law doesn't give a time. No, the return, yes. If you have the if the money is due. Okay. Payment is different from a return. If you have the money, you file and pay. Okay. Because the most important thing, the most important thing is to file. I want you to clarify this one for me between me and my member. Does the law say that you can come and file and pay in thirty three years? And I will say, you are required to file, file, and make payments within thirty days. But by the fact of within the thirty days, is that, is that not the case? Within thirty days. Yeah, yes. we are talking about the law. Yeah, it's not what people who are defaulting doesn't become the law. People who don't have not received payments and things like that. Uh, that those are excuses. The law says you must file and pay within thirty days. Okay, gentlemen, uh, honorable members, let's move on. Uh, the next infraction is on paragraph 127, and it's about outstanding rent tax of 5.2 million Ghana cities. Um, what is the status of this amount now? Honorable uh, Chair, uh, 4.175 of this amount. Uh, have been recovered, have an outstanding amount of one million, and the authority is still pursuing the taxpayers to pay. Can the auditors confirm that, please? Honorable Chair, an amount of four million one hundred seventy-five thousand five hundred ninety-two point zero five has been recovered, leaving a balance of 1039323 Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, infraction is on paragraph 130 and Honorable Aka. Thank you very much, Chairman. According to the auditors, 325 checks amounting to almost nine um, million Ghana cities issued by taxpayers for settlement of their taxes were not honored by the banks. Um, the table shows the breakdown. In order not to waste time, I'd like to know um, which of them have now been honored. Thank you. Uh, on our chair. Um, 3.2 of this amount has been recovered and 5.7 has been restated and uh, 
we are pursuing collection. So this issue has been uh, fully resolved. Thank you. So what steps have you taken to recover the remaining balance? Yes. What steps have you taken to recover the balance? On our chair, it's the same uh, method of, uh, that we employ in collecting our debt. Once uh, the debt is restated, we treat it as a debt and we use all the enforcement uh, measures to collect the debt. Because it's still a tax debt. All right, auditors, can you confirm what has been paid so far? Honorable Chair, an amount of 3,282,179.40 recovered, leaving a balance of 5,736,721.39. Thank you. Thank you. Again, 128 checks with a total value of 562. Thousand Ghana cities were lodged uh, into the banks, but the banks failed to credit your accounts. Uh, what has happened to that? Uh, on our uh, this amount has been fully recovered by the tax payer service centers. Thank you. Uh, auditors, can you please confirm? On our chair, confirmed. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Commissioner, this um, amount of uh, outstanding checks totaling you know, ab about five million. Um, this is, has been outstanding since some of maybe 2019, 2020. So, what is happening? Are they are they in court, or what, what are we doing about it? I'm happy to announce that this has been re uh, fully been recovered, 100 percent. Okay. The amount is currently five eight. No, but I thought you said only three million has been recovered. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, the earlier one. Oh, okay. The five point seven. Yes. Yes. Um, Honourable, uh, we we've. Uh, we, some of the taxpayers have come for rescheduling of the debt. So we are. I know, paid. but this outstanding is as of today. Am I right? 